Hi folks and welcome back to Physics with Captain Rod. Uh, I'm making this video here to uh, help you understand the dynamics of how particles, charged particles, behave uh, when they interact with a uniform electric field. So let me talk a little bit about what we're looking at. We're going to imagine we've got this region in space here with a constant electric field of 10 newtons per coulomb pointing in the plus i direction relative to this coordinate system. These red lines that I've drawn here, these are electric field lines. They're just ways of kind of visualizing the electric field. You notice that the spacing here between the lines is, is pretty much constant throughout this region in space, indicating that this electric field vector is the same in magnitude uh, and direction everywhere in this region. We're going to imagine that this 2 gram particle that carries a charge of 3 millicoulombs is placed here in this field. Um, now, for the sake of this example, I want to just talk about how the electric field interacts with this particle only. So imagine this is like a tabletop or something, and the gravitational force maybe points uh, down into the screen, but there's a normal force supporting this uh, acting uh, up out of the screen, if you will, and the net force is zero. We're also going to ignore any frictional forces or any other types of effects. Normally, you don't worry about gravitational forces on point charges because you're usually talking about atoms, electrons, things like this. You know, the mass of a proton is, you know, order of magnitude 10 to the minus, what, 27th kilograms, the mass of the uh, electron 10 to the minus 31st. Gravitational forces are almost never relevant uh, on these particles, but I chose to use a relatively large mass just so that we have numbers that come out uh, make, to make the video a little uh, easier for me to make, frankly. All right, so we're going to uh, pretend that any gravitational forces are directly counteracted by um, the surface in contact and no friction, and the only force we're going to worry about is the, uh, the Coulomb force, or the force uh, created by this electric field on this charge. What we're going to do here is try to calculate the delta x, like how far this thing has moved and what its final velocity is after one second. So the first thing you have to decide when you're uh, looking at a problem like this is you got to make a decision on, you know, do we use Newton's second law or principles of work and energy? And you know, I always say to people, if you can use energy, do so. It's almost always the easiest way to solve a problem. But let's let's kind of take a look at what would happen here. We don't know this distance. So it's going to be difficult. You know, we're not going to be able to calculate the work done on this particle uh, between positions one and two here, or the initial and final position, whatever you want to call them. So. Because of that, I'd suggest we start with Newton's second law. Good rule of thumb is when you know distances in problems, you should be thinking principles of work and energy because work terms and potential energy terms are easy to calculate. When you know delta t's, Newton's second law is uh, typically a good place to start. So we're going to start with Newton's second law. All right, now when you apply Newton's second law, you've got to have a free body diagram. So I'll go ahead and put a force vector on this particle right where it sits is, is okay. All right, so there's the force acting on this, and we can calculate that easy enough from this field strength. Uh, that force is going to equal the charge uh, that the object carries, 0 0.003 coulombs, that's 3 millicoulombs, times the field strength, 10 newtons per coulomb, and we're going to get 0 0.03 newtons out of that. All right. Now we apply Newton's second law, sum of all forces equals ma, might as well just call right positive. There's only one force here, the 0 0.03 Newtons, equals the mass of this particle, 0 0.002 kilograms. Right? If you want your acceleration in meter per second per second, this needs to be Newtons and this guy in uh, kilograms, times the acceleration. And it's pretty easy to solve that for the acceleration. Take the 0 0.03 Newtons, divide by the point. 0, 0, 002 kilograms and out comes 15 meter per second per second or 15 meter per second squared. All right, next question, you know, what do we do with this? So what we're going to do now is we're going to try to analyze the motion of this object. You notice that I did my uh, kind of motion diagram, the snapshots in time here. These dots are representing the position of this object in time. The distance is getting bigger because this object's moving faster and faster and faster. To analyze that motion, if you've seen any of my videos about motion, you know what I like to do here. We're going to draw a velocity graph. 
velocity graphs are very useful for uh, describing the kinematics of particles. Right? Velocity against time. Now, at t equals zero, this particle started from rest, so time zero, zero velocity, that point is here on the graph. If this had an initial velocity to the right, this graph would start up here somewhere. If it had an initial velocity to the left, this would start down here somewhere. Right? But in this case, it starts from rest, so zero, zero. <clears throat> All right. If we didn't know a time, we would typically just call this some generic time t, but we do have a numerical value here. I'm going to go ahead and put that in, 0.1 seconds later. What we don't know is how fast it's moving, but we do know it's going to be moving to the right at some speed here, so I'm just going to put this on the graph, 0.1 and some velocity. Let's see, I called that v final, so we'll do this. Now, we want our picture to be consistent here, I guess. If I called it v final here and here, let me go back and change this to a v final. That's a little detail, but I like things to match up very nicely. Could have also just changed this to a v2 and this to a v2, but we want these to all be the same. We're looking for v final, v final in our picture, v final in our graph. Now, a million dollar question is how do these connect? And take a look at our force. The net force, there's no time dependency or no position dependency. There's no reason to think this is changing. So if this is not changing and the mass is not changing, this acceleration would not be changing. Constant acceleration means a linear velocity graph. It's quite common to assume constant acceleration with problems like this, even if it's not constant. You know, if it's even approximately constant, this will uh, get you going on, on uh, these types of problems. <clears throat> All right. And the question is, what do we do with this graph, right? Well, we use concepts of slope and area. Let's start with a slope. Remember, accelerations equal a change in velocity over change in time. The acceleration we know is 15 meter per second per second. The um, delta V over delta T represents the slope of this graph, right? The delta V is what we're calling V final. The delta T is 0.1 seconds. Pretty easy to solve that for V final. Uh, 1.5 meter per second. So I chose nice the numbers that I did just to make this uh, work out nice and easy and not have lots of big powers of 10. <clears throat> the delta x. So remember, you know, delta x is average velocity times time, right? That's coming right from the definition of average velocity. Remember, the bar means average. <coughs> Pardon me. On this graph, velocity is this dimension. Time is this dimension. The product of the two is area. Right. This area right here will give the total net displacement, and that's a triangle. So one half the base is 0.1 seconds times the height, <clears throat> 1.5 meter per second. So let's see, this is going to be 0.75 times 0.1. That's 0.075 meters, and there is our delta x. So <clears throat> the point of this video uh, was to try to demonstrate, you know, just a be a simple video demonstrating uh, how to apply these uh, equations like Newton's second law and principles of work and energy to uh, particles moving in electric fields. In this particular video, we did not get to principles of work and energy. I think I'll save that for another one. I hope that this helps with these concepts. Have a great day.